Vineland Estates Winery in Niagara. It's actually in a small area called Vineland and there are Vinelands all around. It's a huge winery, a uh, huge vineyard as well. If you look behind me, you can see sort of the winter, the winter look of the vines. And in the summer, it's all green, very, very pretty. I'm getting kind of a sense of the quiet, peaceful serenity that this place offers for guests that are staying the weekend. The guest house is all the way down there, uh, down the path. And on this side, you have the restaurant. We're going into the wine shop right now. So I'm really excited to get a tour and tasting of their very famous wine, delicious, I've heard. We're checking out the wine tour and tasting right now in the wine shop. Let's go. So we're best known for our Riesling, Chardonnay, and Cabernet Franc, which are great, cool climate varietals that will grow uh, year after year at extremely consistent level. Because we're, we're one of the best places to grow Riesling in all of Niagara. Yes. So Herman Weiss was a guy who came out from, uh, from Germany and wanted to plant Riesling. And no one believed that it would grow because we used to grow Concord, Riparia, all different types of grapes that are great for jams and jellies, but not so great for wine. Mm -hmm. So Herman Weiss planted here, he purchased this land because we sit on the escarpment. And anywhere you go on the property, you dig six feet down, you hit broken limestone. And you can kind of see it exposed in the edge of this escarpment on the bench right here, running along there you can see the boulders in there. And that's what you see underneath, what you would see if you dug into the soil. The broken limestone provides the basis for which we can um, draw the minerality, which makes our Riesling so great. And that's what makes Riesling the food pairing wine. It's really great for Pan-Asian cuisine, um, super hot Southern Indian cuisine as well, cool. because it doesn't exacerbate that heat on your palate. And usually your alcohol levels around 9%, as opposed to say like a full blown Chardonnay out of California at like 13 and a half. Right. Percent. The reason why you see like the rows pr planted so symmetrically, because some of these were some of the first uh, vines planted, the tractors that we had at that time weren't the French um, tractors that could fit through the narrow rows. So that's why some of the rows were larger to start with and then got more condensed as we planted and, and replanted other vines. But they, they run north to south. Lake Ontario is over there in the distance. What happens also is the sun rises in the east and sets in the west at 12 o'clock. It's basically facing straight down the rows and it's exposing the fruits, the fruit set to as much sun as possible. Because we need all the sun and the heat that we can get here in Niagara to fully ripen our grapes as we go. Each one of these tanks holds about uh, 13,000 liters or 15,000 bottles of wine. 15,000? Yeah. What would you say is your most popular wine? Advice? Yeah, so here at Vineland, probably our most popular would be our semi-dry Riesling um, or our Cabernet Franc. And those are, those are two wines that we do have available in the LCBO as general list and perform for us each year at an extremely high level. Cool. These are the presses where you would press ice wine, which is, of course, famous in Niagara. Here at Vineland Estates today in Niagara, and we're just about to take a peek into the wine cellar. So we have 83 would be the first vintage for us. So pretty. So here at Vineland, we use old French oak barrels because it's more important for us to have the fruit at the forefront of our of our wine. As Brian, our winemaker, says, you can't make excellent wine from good grapes. It's got to be excellent grapes from the outset. So that's why all the time is spent in the vineyard and here in the cellar, it's just about adding those little tweaks at the end. This is our wine library. This is a visual representation of every vintage we produce here at Vineland. There you go. Pop. There you are. Nice. So what did it do? So what we want to do is first is actually take a look at the wine. So you're looking to see if there's any imperfections. Swirls, haziness, piece of cork, fruit fly doing the backstroke, any of those undesirables you wouldn't want to put in your mouth, that's what you're looking for first and foremost. 
The next thing you're looking for is actually the color and the intensity of the wine. White wine gets darker with age, red wine gets lighter with age. So the young colors we talk about in white wine typically start with straw, pale straw, watery straw, different iterations of straw, then shifting more to like a yellowish color with age. So that could be barrel aged or fermented Chardonnay or wine that's about three to five years old. And then ultimately we talk about like yellow or sorry, golds and different colors of gold. And that's predominantly really old bottles of white or um, ice wine or Sauterne, something that's had some oxygen at that wine that gives it that golden color. <laughs> So the next thing we want to do after we look at the wine, so this is clear, and I would say it's definitely a pale watery straw. So we're, we're definitely knowing this wine's under three years old, um, no faults. The next thing we want to do is actually smell the wine. Um, you're smelling for faults like you were looking for faults. So put the edge of the glass on your lip, your nose in as far as it'll go, and you're smelling for those faults. Damp basement, wet cardboard that's corking, acetone, nail polish remover smell, volatile acidity, um, Merc captains like dirty, smelly gym bag, um, and those are kind of the more dominant faults that you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> hydrogen, hydrogen, sulfide. Tennis balls. That documentary on Netflix. Psalm. Mm. Yeah. 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 You guys are pros already. No, then. It, was, no. it was cool because you sound <laughs> like one of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So the next thing, what you're looking for. Old world, new world. Wet meat, wet leather. Yeah, so it's well. never a good smell. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now what you want to do is actually smell for what's going on with the wine. So that's when we humor the wine, so you swirl it around. The reason we didn't do that first is because we don't want to mask any of those volatile faults that might be present in the wine. So we humor it like my bad jokes, and we don't do a lot of <laughs> Now what we want to do is take a smell and see what's going on with the wine. And I tell people it's like a target. Do you smell fruit or flower? And then you kind of hone in. So, okay, I definitely dominant fruit. I'd say it's tree fruit, not just tree fruit, but maybe apple, not just any apple, like Blue. empire apple, apple, not apple pie, but apple off the tree, like you just bit into or cut Green into apple. a fresh empire apple, yeah. yeah. And the best thing is you smell what you smell, you taste what you taste, you drink what you like. So if you get empire apple or granny smith apple, we're not gonna argue, argue over the little s subtle differences because how you smell something and I smell something, they're gonna be different to begin right. with. So benchmarking your own palate is the best way to, to go about anything. So the last thing you wanna do after you've smelled the wine and decide all those great things that you smell in there is actually to taste the wine. So the first sip you wanna work your palate, make sure it touches all corners of your mouth so that you can kind of understand what's going on with the wine. Maybe you chewed some gum, brushed your teeth, you have a light, lovely smile maybe a cup of coffee or a shot of tequila before you got at it. So all those things are gonna mess with how you taste the wine. So that first sip is just to get you going. You can suck some air into the wine as well, which also helps it open up. Think of it like decanting or aerating the wine in your mouth. The second and third sip of the wine will actually tell you what's going on with there. And you definitely wanna taste those things that you smelled in the wine. So it's like having your cake and eating it too. We call it transferring from the nose to the palate. So if you smelled nice apple in there, a little bit of citrus or lemon peel. Those are the things you should taste in the wine as well. And that's an indication of a high quality wine. Thanks so much, Andre, for help uh, learning to taste and swirl and sip and smell. Cheers. My pleasure, cheers. You guys, we just spent a beautiful evening here at Vinelands and this is the view. Just wanted to show you guys some of the rooms here at Vinelands and uh, this is one of them, the Bordeaux room. But the view is what is really outstanding. The vineyard looks onto that. There's a lovely trellis and then there's a patio where you could sit outside if it's nice weather. And you can see the Vineland estate right there. So pretty. And if you go this way, Everything is a kind of vintage look, which is really nice. This is the next room. Oops, I removed that towel. <laughs> and then the view is very peaceful, serene. Let me see through the window is better. Really nice. This is the third bedroom. Bunk bed, double on the bottom. Single on top. I think, let me see. 